गुड मॉर्निंग सर ओके सो इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग विथ यू द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ जेंडर बेसिकली सो आई एम शमशेर डॉक्टर शमशेर कैन आई शेयर द पीपीटी uh yes you can share okay give me a minute yeah is it visible now uh yes it's visible okay okay so the students uh, i have some questions before going to the lecture so uh, the condition is that uh, immediately after i am asking a question you need to respond whatever coming your mind is it clear it's exclusively for the students not for others is it clear to students yeah please unmute and mute and tell me your voice is needed here yes sir okay so everybody yes, okay okay so the first question is who is the captain of indian cricket team unmute yourself and give the answer virat kohli okay virat kohli Now the second question: Name some Bollywood and Hollywood superstars. Name some Bollywood and Hollywood superstars. Uh, for Bollywood, it would be a uh, Shah Rukh Khan, Amir Khan. Salman Khan and mm -hmm. for Hollywood, uh, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, Chitra. Okay, fine. Yeah. The third question: List out some Indian freedom fighters. The third question is: List out some Indian freedom fighters. Subhash Chandra Bose and later uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, okay. The fourth question: Do India have a football team? Yes. Okay. Who is the captain? Sunil Chetri. Uh huh. Okay. So will you all given the answers? Uh, for fourth questions, and uh, we will look at again the question. Okay, what was the first question? The question was, who is the captain of Indian cricket team, right? And what is what was your answer? The immediate answer was Virat Kohli, right? Yes. Okay. Now my question: Who is Mithali Raj? Captain of the women's team, women's Indian team. Pardon, captain of captain of Indian women cricket team. Indian women cricket team. What was my question? Who is the captain of Indian cricket team? I didn't ask who is the captain of female Indian cricket team. 
Did I ask? No. Then why did you say it is Virat Kohli? Because he is more popular. Mm -hmm. Any other reason? And by default, only if it is mentioned as women's team, uh, then only it comes to our head, or else it's always men. Yeah, yeah, of course, true. Okay, look at the second question. Name some Bollywood and Bollywood superstar. The immediate answer was Amir Khan, no, uh, Shah Rukh Khan and Salman Khan, right? What about Priyanka Chopra, Deepika Patukon, Rani Mukherjee, Karina, Karishma, Sri Devi, Kungana? Who are they? Are they superstars in the Hollywood and Bollywood? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The third question was list out some Indian freedom fighters. The immediate answers Subhash Chandra Bos and Mahatma Gandhi. Have you heard about this name, Urmila Devi, Durga Bhai Deshmukh, Deshmukh Esam Bujamal, Basandi Devi, Rajkumari Amit Kaur, Sujeta Kapilani, Kasturba Gandhi, Kamala Nehru, Vijay Lakshmi Pandey. Who is Kasturba Gandhi? Mahatma Gandhi's wife. Mm -hmm. Mahatma Gandhi's wife. Are you sure? No other reason to say. Who is Kamala Nehru? Who is Kamala Nehru? Nehru's wife? Okay, if I say that is Nehru's wife. So who is Nehru? Kamala Nehru's husband. See what I'm saying that here, you can look at that you now how our brain is working. Our brain actually working in a gendered way, as you know, uh, the head of the department of your department said in that way, you know, we are living in a gendered society and our brain is also working in a gendered way. So that's why, you know, when I ask the question, who is the captain of Indian cricket team? The immediate answer you said it's Virat Kohli because in our brain, Virat Kohli is the only captain of Indian cricket team. We are not considering Mithali Raj as Indian cricket team, but we are considering Mithali Raj as Indian female cricket team. Right? So the next question I am asking again to you, who is the president of Nigeria? Who is the president of Nigeria? Any idea? Okay. How will you find out? How will you get the answer? Google. Mm -hmm. Google. Yeah, of course, Google. Muhammad Bukhari. Yeah, Mohammed Buhari. Yeah, you Google it. Okay, look at this Google search. I searched who is the captain of Indian cricket team. So what is the answer there? Google has given a particular answer. What is the answer here? Google has given. Can 
हेलो विराट कोहली विराट कोहली एंड देयर इज नाउ मिताली राज राइट इवन गूगल इज गिविंग अ जेंडर्ड आंसर इवन गूगल इज गिविंग अ जेंडर्ड आंसर लुक एट दैट नाउ मिताली राज इज कमिंग हियर so you need to specifically ask who is a captain of indian female cricket team the same way which i asked you the same way which you have given the google also giving so my point is here again google is also a gendered uh, knowledge system or you know the gateway to get the answers so another things uh, what is your first thought when you hear the word farmer what what kind of picture is coming in your mind when you hear the word farmer like this picture yes something similar something similar right who is she who is she Woman. A woman. Yeah. Anything else? Is she a farmer? Yeah. Fatima Sifan is saying, "Yeah, farmer. She is very much a farmer." Yeah. What is your first thought when you hear a nurse? The word nurse. What kind of picture is coming in your mind? Like this. Yes. Okay. Who is he? Who is he? Nurse Fatima Raslak is saying it's a nurse. Yeah, he's nurse. He's very much an engineer. What kind of picture is coming to your mind? Similar like. like this kind of picture yes yes a cook or a chef what kind of picture is coming in your mind like this yes mm -hmm. who is she who is she mother okay anybody else cook housewife cook 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 yeah what is the difference between these two people both are cook right both are cook but one person is earning money another one it's not getting any money right one is paid job another one is invisible unpaid job right okay a pujari or a saint what kind of picture is come in your mind like this Okay, I'm again asking some more questions. Um, okay, how many of you are able to climb a big tree? How many of you are able to climb a big tree? I know sir. Big tree, not a small one. Small. Not small one. I am asking a big one, just like as you know the coconut tree, the Kerala. I have no. How many of you are able to do that? Nobody. Okay, riding a royal enfield. 
How many of you are able to ride a Royal Enfield? And if PK, yes. Anybody else? Anim, no? Anim PK, yes. Anybody else? Okay. How many of you want to go for bodybuilding? Or how many of you are going for bodybuilding? Nobody? Okay. How many of you know how to do household work? Or how many of you are doing it every day, household works? Fatima Shifana, yes, me. Subarna Sarkar, me. Yes. 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 Boys. Boys. I won't get the answer of the boys. Mm -hmm. Look at that difference. Look at that difference. You know, climbing a tree, riding a royal enfield, and bodybuilding. It's kind of you know masculine one. And household work is a kind of you know feminine work. What is the difference between these two sets of work? One is more in you know, a kind of adventurous one. Another one is a kind of you know passive work in that way. So you can see that how male and how female are categorized in the case of different kinds of activities. So this is basically we consider as gender. Anne Oakley says that, Anne Oakley is a feminist a sociologist. She says that gender is a matter of culture. It is refers to social classification of men and women into masculine and feminine. What Anne Oakley says, says that gender is a matter of culture. It refers to social classification of men and women into masculine and feminine. So we will look at that. There is two sets of words. There are two types of words. You now you might have heard about one is sex and another one is gender. We normally talk about the gender only because you know sex the word you know we cannot use it uh, publicly or you know, in front of everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in front of everybody we cannot use it. Right. So we are using it gender, gender, gender everywhere instead of sex. Is there any difference between sex and gender? Is there any difference between sex and gender? Hello, I need your answer, then only I can move forward. Is there any difference between sex and gender or is it same? Okay, nobody is giving any answer. Okay. The both term, both word are entirely different. You can see that uh, in, 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 in the world, there are different types of understanding about gender and sex. One set of scholars, one set of academic scholars are saying that sex and gender are different. Sex is biological and gender is socio-cultural. And some sets of scholars are saying that sex is also cultural and gender is also cultural. And another type of people, uh, the scholars, they are saying that sex and gender are biological. So there are three types of understanding about sex and gender. So I'm going to take the first one. Sex is biological and gender is socially constructed or sociocultural. Because you know, the biological determinism, the third one, which I said, sex and gender are natural which is actually for the white supremacy for you know for uh, uh for supporting the racial and other kind of discrimination especially in india it's for the caste discrimination that means your all kind of behavior it is coming from your parents 
not nothing related to the society which is always talking about the caste also say, saying the same thing so here you can see that the difference between sex and gender in the first difference Okay, before going to that, uh, I'm asking uh, two more questions. How many sexes are available? How many sexes are available? Two. Two? What are they? What are they? Male, female, and transgender. Okay, male and female. Male and female. Okay, the number is two. So they're saying that uh, two. Somebody is saying transgender. So the sex commonly we are seeing in the world is three. That's male, female, and intersex. Intersex is actually born with a uh, different reproductive and sexual. Uh, Anatomy that means uh, sometimes you know uh, they have you know they cannot identify nobody people cannot identify what is their sex in that way it's, there are many examples for that uh, sometimes you know they come in with uh, uh, vagina without any vaginal opening and sometimes you know uh, penis without uh, showing it visible in that way you can see that so that considered as an intersex normally we have three uh, sexes one is male and second one is female and third one is intersex another question how many genders are available i i want the number how many genders are available how many genders are available yeah please answer Three, okay, Sri Lashmi is saying three, what are they? Muhammad Suhail is saying many, yeah. Muhammad Akib is five. Somebody is saying three, many. Yeah, Hiba is saying male, female and trans. Yeah, the answer is actually many. You can see that there are a number of uh, gender. I will share that uh, list of the gender with Shamsir. Shamsir can uh, share with you later. So there are different types of gender. The transgender, which we are considering, it is not a, a single group. It's a, uh, it's umbrella term. There inside you can see that normally we are calling it trans people, not trans, even transgenders also, not transgender, transgenders. Inside you can see that a number of uh, people having different, different kind of genders. So the, uh, the, which we were talking about the sex and gender, Sex is, uh, is natural and biological, which is, you know, by birth, you are getting a sex. Sex is natural and biological. Gender is sociocultural and human made. That means gender is not by birth you are getting. Gender is which is a sociocultural and which is made by the human, basically man-made. We are saying the man-made. The language is a patriarchal, but Normally, we are considered as a human made thing, gender. And the second difference is sex is related to the visible differences in the genitalia and related differences in the procreative functions. That means it is uh, the visible differences, whether it is a vagina or whether it is a penis. And it is also related to your hormones, it is also related to your chromosomes, and it is also related to other procreative functions. But gender refers to the masculine and feminine qualities, behavior, patterns, roles, and responsibility. So I'm asking, what are the qualities women should have? Girls should have. What are the qualities women or girls should have? Please tell me what are the qualities women should have? Okay. 
in different way i'm asking another question why are you growing the girls and especially to the girls why are you growing your hair hair talamudi why are you growing it to the boys why are you cutting your it's considered as a boy cut why are you doing it for beauty okay because that's one of the ways how we are distinguished from each other mhm mm any other reason it's for the distinguish between us male and female okay what are the qualities or you know what are the behavior what are the roles what are the roles women should have and what are the roles women men should have uh selin abdul nasir is saying that that's how we are raised yeah that's the training you know we are getting in our day to day life so the second difference is sex refers to the visible differences in the genitalia and related differences in the procreative functions and gender refers to the masculine and feminine qualities behavior patterns and roles and responsibilities the third difference is sex is constant it remains same everywhere and gender is variable time to time it is variable culture to culture also it it will it changes and family to family also it changes the so sex is constant we are saying that when you at at one place you have a particular sex a biological sex and when you go from that place also you are carrying the same sex right but gender is not like that look at you know uh, at your at your home how you are behaving and at uh, in the campus on the campus how you are behaving at your particular friends group how you are behaving is it similar are they all the behavior similar your home your campus and uh, from your friends group how do you behave there is it same way no no yeah of course because you know that is the different that is the gender actually working but the sex the biological sex is same everywhere right at your home at the campus with your friends your biological sex is similar right it's not going to change is it right mhm mm yes the fourth difference sex cannot be changed and gender can be changed there is a star sex now we can have you know some options for changing the sex but you know immediately you cannot do that there are some you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, counselings and operations and everything but immediately you cannot change early morning you wake, wake up and say you know my sex is changed that you cannot do that but gender can be changed according to change your behavior your roles and responsibilities these are the difference basic difference between sex and gender now look at that you know uh, somebody say you know it's for the distinguish you know now now umar right now umar says that you know it is to distinguish uh, the male and female right so look at that uh, the socialization process is very important here the socialization process is happening here there are four steps in the socialization process throughout our life when you look at that so i will give you some example how you know we are getting this gender we already said sex we are getting by birth but gender is cultural and so uh, it is uh, it is human made or socio cultural look at that the first step of socialization is manipulation manipulation is that immediately after the birth of a baby how you are going to treat the baby mm -hmm. so immediately after the birth what the doctor or the nurse says സംശയം മൻ മനസ്സിലായോ ഞാൻ ചോദിക്കുന്നത് എന്ന് വെച്ചാല് ഒരു കുട്ടി ജനിച്ചു ജനിച്ച ഉടനെ ഡോക്ടറോ നേഴ്സോ പുറത്ത് വന്നിട്ട് എന്താ പറയാ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ഗേൾ ഓർ എ ബോയ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ബേബി ഗേൾ ഓർ ബോയ് യെസ് 
So how do they understand your gender? Looking at the looking at the biological sex, they are saying that it's a boy or a girl. Look at that this photo here. You can see that uh, it's a uh, one person is asking, is it a baby? Is a boy or girl? Is it a boy or girl? Then another person saying that I don't know. It can't talk yet. That means you know your gender nobody can say because you know your gender is only you can say after you know you have a maturity to think about your gender but you know your sex you can say that you know at least anytime you know if somebody is looking at and they can understand that is manipulation basically basically that how you are treating a baby immediately after the birth after that you can see that you know the different colors we are using for the babies what are the colors using for the babies different colors we are using for a girl and for a boy pink and blue blue and pink pink for girl and blue for boy right why do they use is there any logic behind that why can't we use black and white or why can't we use red and uh, yellow or in another sense, you know, what can we use pink for boys and blue for girls? Is there any difference? Okay, I'll ask another question. What is the color of sky? Blue. Mm -hmm. What is the color of ocean? Yeah, that is the logic behind, you know, why they are using for boys. Blue color is using for boys. This is the reason because, you know, the height, the deep, wide and everything is, you know, it's for boys. That is manipulation. Manipulation that how you are treating a baby, baby immediately after the birth. The canalization, the second step is canalization. Canalization is that the object which you are getting, the toys, what kind of toys you are getting. What are the toys boys? are getting and what are the toys girls are getting what kind of toys they are getting what before what before boys fatima rasla for girls yeah any other toys yeah respond immediately yeah please speed up your response yeah girls usually get tall dolls yeah Car for boys, dolls for girls, Barbie kitchen set for girls, yeah, Ziba, that was a good answer. Vehicles for boys, yes, yes, yeah. So look at that, why girls are getting the kitchen set? Why are they getting the kitchen set? So that means that is a kind of training girls are getting after growing up, your work or your role is in the kitchen. So you play with that toys. It is not an innocent uh, act. This is a kind of training which the society, the patriarchal society is giving to the babies. The vehicles, the, uh, the gun, everything is for boys. That is means the protection of the, the duty of the protection. Protection duty is the uh, uh, duty, duty of a boy or a, or a male member in the family or drivers. Boys are the better drivers. So these whole things, you know, the second step is canalization is for talking about it's how you are treating the baby through the toys or objects or the attraction towards the object. And the third thing is verbal ablation. What kind of verbal ablation, what kind of words you are using towards a baby or you know, how your body language. That means, you know, if it is you are going to visit a baby. And you identify that uh, looking at the biological sex of that baby, you identify that this is this kind of 
gender and this kind of gender and accordingly you will start behavior what kind of verbal appellation we are using towards a girl you're so cute you're so beautiful if it is a boy you are handsome you are rough and tough no normally in 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 the northern area we are saying that you know mard ko dard nahi hota hai that means you no know, purushan uh, vedana undavilla otherwise uh, you can see that you know uh, boys boys don't cry normally we say that boys don't cry or don't cry like a don't cry like a don't try cry like a girl yeah mohammed so i'll say that don't cry like a girl and the words you know appellation in after growing up what we are getting sit properly who is getting these words this kind of suggestions or commands don't cry like girls yeah uh, uh sit properly yeah girls getting it uh uh then don't laugh loudly don't laugh loudly who are getting this yeah girls mm -hmm. so look at that you know the words you know these are all kinds things are you know it's the verbal appellation which is actually giving a particular training you know continuously you are getting it as you know jodi patel is saying the jodi patel is one of the uh, prominent scholar in the gender study she is saying that the gender is not at is the act, act of the first place but you know if you are doing it repeatedly if you are doing it again and again it is actually giving a, a training and construct your gender so this verbal appellation sit properly sit properly sit properly don't raise your voice don't raise your voice eh? or you know or don't cry like a girl boys don't cry you are hearing it continuously repeatedly repeatedly and your gender is going to established there you are going to identify your gender through this kind of training and the fourth step is activity exposure what is activity exposure what are the activities you are getting at your family so one example i'm giving uh, your father an example your father is changing the tire of a car 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 a puncture so he is trying to change the replace or change the tire who is supposed to go and help boys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay your mother is in the kitchen and she is preparing something or you know some guests are going to some guests are coming so she is preparing food so who is going to who go, who is supposed to go and help girls yeah so this is a kind of you know again hanini is saying that both suppose you know we should both should go there but mostly you know we if you are looking at the family you can see that the girls they don't have any option they should they have to go to the kitchen in another option if you are looking at that you no know, uh, some guest came at your house they are in the house and mother and daughter are sitting in the balcony and father and son uh, went to the kitchen for preparing food have you seen such situation at your home no 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 why why what is the reason you might have seen the movie the great indian kitchen yeah our culture yeah male is always dominant mm -hmm. yeah this is a kind of uh, this is a kind of training we are getting to establish our gender identity basically so this socialization process even after the uh, this all socialization happening in at your, at, your, at our houses and later you can see that when we are going to the schools schools the seating the seat arrangement we can see that one side only boys and another side is only for girls is it right
Yes, yes. Yes, why? What is the reason why we are not sitting, you know, in a in different places? Oh, in any, any places rather than you know categorizing in a different different areas. Why can't we sit together? Is there any problem? Is there any problem to sit like that? A boy, a girl, a boy, a girl, a boy, a girl. Can we sit like that? Mm -hmm. See again, the society or you know the society of a culture which is actually patriarchal somebody said it's a male dominant so that is actually happening the male dominance in our society which is actually dividing our society and this gender socialization which i said the socialization process the gender socialization is making the society more discriminatory that means, and including the rape, including the sexual harassment, everything is because of this kind of gender socialization. That means we are dividing our babies or, you know, our people based on the gender. It is not a categorizing for easy work, actually not. It is for the male dominance, nothing else. It is actually male are getting the preference. Look at that, at your home, your father has number of privileges, number of, you know, uh, benefits. And your mother has supposed to, you know, uh, they, she should not get this kind of benefit. Even looking at the decision making, your family is going to buy a car, hmm? a, a BM, just imagine a BMW. Your family decided to by a BMW, who will decide? Or uh, who will decide the model? Who will decide the interior and everything? The model and everything. Or the dis ultimate decision making, who will take? Father, 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 mm -hmm. father and brother, yeah, of course. The male members, right? The male members, basically, right? If you want to go outside, you know, at 10 o'clock in the night, do you need to take permission? I'm asking to the uh, girls, do you need to take the permission? Yes. What boys do normally? Boys are doing it, you know, they are just informing. They are just informing, but girls should take the permission. Yeah, normally we are going to the mother and we will, uh, mother will go to the father to ask that things. The socialization is happening because, you know, this is a kind of, you know, the patriarchy, the male dominance we have, which is happened or which is in the society because of this gendered social socialization and which gives many privileges or benefits to the boys and it discriminate it suppress it oppresses women and girls and apart from that it is the the uh, the patriarchal system or the patriarchy basically a problem for the boys also i will give you one example uh, in your classroom, you can see that there are a number of girls and there are a number of boys. After the course, you are comple after you're completing your BA and MA and PhD and everything, you just imagine, or MA. Don't know, you know, everybody has completed, everybody has completed MA. And after the course, boys don't have any option. They have to go for the job, right? I would take a jolly other come job. MHA is initial. No. What about what about girls? Do they have option? Yes, of course, because you know, it's a burden for male now. Look at that. The patriarchal system. It's a burden. Male dominance. Male dominance in our society, which is actually a burden. Look at that. You know, uh, in my case, and if I'm taking, I don't want to work. But no, the patriarchal burden forced me to do the work after, after the 
course. So this is actually a gender socialization, the patriarchal system is making the benefit, giving the benefit, giving the privilege at the same time, it's a burden for us. Even look at that, the farmer suicide. Most of the time, if you're looking at the gender of the farmer, you can see that mostly the male farmers are uh, doing the suicide because, you know, they are thinking that the protection of the family or you know, the responsibility of the family is my, as a male member of the family, I should take all the responsibilities and I will suicide. Hmm? So, my uh, so, responsibility and right. So this is a kind of you know masculine understanding in the patriarchal society. Look at this uh, photo. Uh, one doctor or Aya is asking to a mother, what do you wish, a girl or a boy? And the mother is saying that it doesn't matter. But at your house or you know, somewhere in the corner of your family, you can see that a male preference in the family because of Hopefully it will be a boy because it is the responsibility of the boy to take care of the family. Girls will go to another house after the marriage, right? Look at these toys. What are the toys? What kind of toys are they? Is it for girls or boy? Mm -hmm. What about this? What about this? Boys, okay. Look at these pictures, how they representing male and look at these pictures, how the media representing women. Because you know, women is always a sex object in the media. Mostly, you know, most of the movies or the item dance, look at the item dance in the movies. Who is doing that item dance? Mamuti, Mohalal, item dance. Are they doing item dance? Mm -hmm. Women? No. Because in the patriarchal system, in the male dominated system, the movies, all kind of entertainment is for male. It's for the male pleasure, not for the female. Right. And some other gendered examples I'm giving. Shamsif, can I get 15 more minutes? Uh, oh, yes, yes, please. Okay. So the dress, look at that dress, the dressing style, the different dressing style we are using, you know, it's not for uh, uh, to distinguish ourselves. It is actually a kind of discrimination. Uh, mostly girls are wearing the sari. Right. Sari is, you know, it's very a difficult dress for the movement and everything. Yeah. Qualities and characteristics, we already said that. Now we will go to the last play, uh, point, spaces. What are the gendered spaces? Can you give me some example for gendered space? A space only men can go, a space only women can go. Don't tell me toilet and everything, because then it has a different reason. Bar, bar for girls. Only girls are going to the bar. Iba. Only boys, yeah. Boys, any other space? Such space? Beauty parlor? Mm -hmm. Any other example? Some temple restricted for girls, yeah. Ravina. Darga, yes. Mostly the religious, some religious places. Look at that, you know, I will give you some other example. Uh, the, the the tea shops. Tea shops in the in the in the villages. Yeah, graveyard, of course, cemetery, smashan. Smashan only male. Uh, is no such rule, but only Mila in the, in in, uh, in this kind of you know tea shop, not in the cities. Cities you can see that you know girls are also there, but in the in the, in the villages, how many of you go into the village tea shop to chit chat with your friends and sit reading a newspaper? Because in, in Kerala you can see that everywhere such kind of tea shops. 
How many of you are going there? Not boys. I'm asking how many girls are going to the village tea shop sometime for smoking or you know any other kind of pan masala things and sitting there reading newspaper and chit chat with your friends. See these kind of you know gendered spaces we can see in the society which is actually discriminating ourselves. It's actually giving a gender identity in our mind. That actually how you are understanding your identity, the inner identity because of your social and cultural impact or the social or cultural training which you are getting from the society, from the family, from the religion, from the caste and from the education system, from the judiciary. Even the judiciary, you can see that recently there was an incident happened in Supreme Court yesterday. I think. Uh, the rapist was asked a question from the Chief Justice or the judges of the Supreme Court. Uh, will you marry her? The, uh, will, uh, the rapist asked that when will you marry that victim? So this is a kind of, you know, how our judiciary system is patriarchal or, you know, a kind of you know a patriarchal training we are getting in that way and the economic system economic system in the way uh, you know voice handling the money just imagine if you are you know i don't know whether your mother also employed if anybody house in that way mother employed father is also employed both are employed both are earning money and mother is also getting money and father is also getting money Ultimately, who is going to manage the both salary? Who is going to manage the salary? Father? 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 Why? Fa mother is also earning the money and she is not able to use that money. Why? Is she not able, is she not able to do that? Now we are saying that mother is doing it. Yeah, good. It's a good example. In different case, father is doing all kind of this such economic activities because you know our uh, social institution as an economic system, as a social institution, we are considered as a patriarchal setup. So the gender identity which I was talking about, gender identity, which uh, the way we are understanding ourselves, what is our identity, which is actually not a our own choice. The people, they have chosen their identity, gender identity, they are actually transgenders. Male or female, which we understood that throughout our societal or, you know, socialization, gender socialization, which was not our choice. The people who are choosing their own identity after understood that, you know, this is not my gender or this is not my identity they will go to other, their own, their own suitable gender. Those people are actually identifying their gender. They are actually realizing their identity. Those people are transgenders. But we are considered that the male and female are supreme and transgenders are you know, a marginalized group, subordinate group. No, basically it is in a different way. We are actually ours, it is not our choice whether I'm male or female. Because you know, it is a training which we got from the society continuously. I will ask one, uh, two, three questions. You might have heard about this, you know, um, mythology. Why only Sita had to give Acne Parisha? Sita, Rama and Sita, Rama and Sita, uh, Katilubui. What the Sida, why only Sida had to give the Akni Parisha? And in the Hindu community, you can see that why do women have to do fasting? Hindu girls, women are doing fasting, especially Monday. Monday fasting is for getting the better house, better husband. Just like as you know, another example, girls, uh, boys brings dowry. Why boys are bringing down? Why girls are not getting kind of dowry from the boys' house? Why parda for women? 
Farda system. Why Farda system for especially for Muslim women? Property of father, who is going to manage it? So these all things, if you are looking at that, you know, it is all imposed on, all, everything is imposed on women. It is the women's responsibility to take care of the family. It is the women's responsibility to take care of the husband. It is women's responsibility to show the chastity or, you know, charitram, the honor and everything is, you know, it's women's responsibility. We normally say that the, the, in the gender studies, it's, we are saying that, you know, the honor of the family is actually not the women. It is actually a some body part of the women. Basically, it's vagina. The, that is the honor of the family. If you know the rape and everything, you know, in we are considering that way. The honor of the family, it's you know, the responsibility of the women members of the family. That's why you know when a war happens, when war, war happens, the soldiers normally doing you know the rape of women because you know it's a kind of war tool to use against the enemy because you know you are not able to protect your women and see we are raping we are taking the honor of the family or the the country you can see that that's why you know the soldiers and most of the time you know including the war you can see that how women are raped in that way Okay, so I'm stopping uh, with uh, two, three concepts and uh, two concepts, which is equality and equity, we'll, which I stop here after explaining it what is equality. Have you heard about this word equality and equity? Normally we are using it as, you know, uh, synonyms, equality and equity, both are same. What is the difference between equality and equity? Do you know, anybody has any idea? Okay, so the equality is, and I'll give you one example for the equality. There are five members. Just imagine there are five members. They went for a program or something like that, five members, and they bought a, a cake, a uh, caramel or whatever, you know, a red velvet, whatever, the cake they have purchased. They buy, they buy a cake and the five members are there. In the five members, within the five members, three are not hungry. Three. Yeah. The five members, out of the five members, three are not hungry and two are hungry. How will you divide the cake? One cake, five members, three are not hungry and two are hungry. How will you, how will you divide the cake? Is it clear the question? Okay. There are five members. Okay. Five members, one cake. There are five members, one cake. Out of that five members, three are not hungry. Two are hungry. That means, how will you divide? Mm -hmm. A bigger portion for the hungry ones, Sri Lakshmi is saying, yeah. Because, you know, we are not going to treat everybody equal here. Because, you know, we need to treat according to their needs. Two people are hungry, so we need to treat accordingly. And three are not hungry, so we need to treat them accordingly. We are not going to treat everybody equal. That is actually equity. If you are treating everybody equal, that is equality. If you are giving, you know, five equal pieces to everybody, that is a discrimination, basically. So this is actually happening with the women in the gender, gender equality. When you are saying that we need gender equality, it is wrong completely. We don't want gender equality. We need gender equity because we need to treat women according their, according their need. That's why we... That's why we have, that's why we have reservation. Reservation is based on this equity concept. 
that's why you know we have a gender reservation women reservation you can look at that in the bus in the bus women are getting you know women are some seats are also for women what is the reason behind that if you are treating everybody is equal if you are treating male and female are equal then you can see that it is not possible women are getting seat in the bus so we need to treat accordingly that reservation is actually a equity concept if you are treating everybody equal or if you are giving equal opportunity to everybody which is a discrimination i will show you one photo look at this this photo is saying that for a fair selection for a fair selection everybody has to take the same example please claim that this is actually example for the equality so look at that one crow one monkey one penguin one elephant one fish and one dog and another animal also and the human beings were uh, one person saying that you know for a fair selection everybody has to take a take the same example same exam what do you think is it a uh, giving an equality or a discrimination because you know this person is treating everybody as equal because you know they are giving getting a same examination is it a discrimination or a equality yeah discrimination mm -hmm. look at this picture equality equity reality and liberation equality if you are treating everybody as equal some are actually discriminated and if you are looking at giving the equity according to their needs we then everybody will get that but the reality is that you know according to your gender according to your religion according to your caste or you know your race or your you know uh, physical handicap whatever it is you know the marginalized group always going to be the marginalized that is the society as you know your head of the department started with indian constitution indian constitution actually gives an equal dignity and self esteem to everybody that is you know equality before law article 14 and there should not be any kind of discrimination based on article 15 article 17 uh, abolition of untouchability dignity article 21 article uh, 23 there are a number of articles fundamental rights we have article 19 especially freedom of speech and everything but the reality is that because our social system is stronger than our uh, our legal system our we have a beautiful legal system which propose a e equal society or egalitarian society but the social system is highly gendered highly casteist highly classist and highly religious based fundamentalism so uh, i'm stopping here dr shamsir i'm stopping here